Good afternoon, all. CamelbackTrading.org coming to you this Friday afternoon, September 23rd. We are looking at Window Traders' market profile, the ES and SPY. And after being down $21 last week, the S&P, we're down just under 17 and a half, and that's with a pretty good rally that rallied the market about 4 bucks, uh, over $4 late in the day. <clears throat> so at one point, we were down just as much as we were last week. Um... What I think happened late in the day, purely simple, is a lot of short covering, right? The market's gotten pretty short. Uh, bottom feeders, you know, they love to try to pick the bottom. And more importantly, something we have to keep an eye on was balance low buyers, was swing, tra uh, swing traders, okay? We're in a five-month $70 balance. We got within a dollar of it. So you all know the balance rules. That's one of them is you get to uh, close to a balance, hold it, and then go up. Now, by no means am I saying that that's what we did today, and we're going back to the balance high of 431. <laughs> Not saying that. But there are some big swing traders around, and that's a great risk-reward trade. They'll take a $2 risk on size to see if this is going to hold the bottom, Okay. And, then, and put a swing trade on um, for the upper end. So definitely something to keep in mind. We also did something today. And again, we're going to go over all the charts of all three of these indices. But which is absolutely fascinating to me. Again, now we had done this earlier this year when we made a new low. But last year, we uh, uh, last year, earlier this year, we took out 2021's high by 98 cents. Today, we took it out by less than a dollar again. Now, again, we're, we're still, you know, we took it out back on the yearly low, but again, we didn't take it out that much. So it's interesting because with one quarter to go, we have an opportunity for an outside year down and an outside year up if this market was ever to have a tremendous rally in the fourth quarter. Just something that I thought was fairly interesting. We now have two monthly lows. And a weekly low. We have today's low, the yearly low, and December of 2020 monthly low, all within a little under $2 from each other. I'd be surprised if they hold. Now, those other two monthly lows held for a while when we rallied all the way up to May's high. Now, we came all the way back down and just missed them again. But again, just because we rallied off of this doesn't mean the, the, the uh, low is in and we're going to go back up. There will be baby steps for buyers, right? First thing is to take out um, today's high and then get the gap, which is still just under $3. It's a pretty large gap. Triple Qs still have their gap. It's not as big. And again, we're going to go over all the charts for them also. And Russell still has their gap. Okay, now, today we only end up with the day's high and the day's low now, we do have an 8-wide park, but I only carry forward 9-wide. I won't ignore it Monday if we trade there, but I won't carry it forward if we don't hit it within the next couple of days. If we do not gap either higher or lower on Monday, we should have major chop inside of here. Major chop. Now, yesterday I said there was tremendous buying out of 12-wide park that I said, eh, it was that long-term money buying it. Today, early on, started the same progress, uh, process. Five time frames, we built up a lot of volume here, as you can see. But then it failed. However, however, we did attempt to go trend a couple of times. And those failed also. And look where we closed, right back at that level. So even though we have another large gap today, and yesterday we were down on the day, we end with a 12 wide pock yesterday and 8 wide pock today and no trend day down. Just a little food for thought. Now, as far as my trading to go over, it is silly. Did nothing but short the entire day except one long, which came in H period, when I thought we were going to stop the one time framing down. And we did. And I made money on it. I innovated it because I didn't know how much we were going to get. We didn't get a lot out of it, but I still made money. But I shorted. We talk, I talk about my ebb and flow trade. So the people in my room know what it is. People who have been listening to me know what it is. When the market is so strong to one side, when the indices are down a lot, overnight low is gone, gap, IB low, one time framing down. Any push up is worth a short, right? It's, it's just like an ocean tide. 
It's the ebb and flow. You know the market's going to come back in. So, it go, you know, they try to push it up. You take the short and it comes right back in again. So that's basically what I did on a day like today. Constantly. Twice in A. Four in B. I uh, did it in D. Did it in E. F period. When the market started getting going, I was stuffing my face with lunch. So I didn't even take a short. Definitely missed shorts in F. But that's okay. Doesn't matter. Because guess what? I resumed shortening G. Uh, H period, I said I took the long, the only long of the day, shorter than J, shorter than K, and actually lost money in L. Only loss of the day. I took the short. I said if we take out K's high, I'm out. I had shorted, I forgot where I shorted. Lost like five points on it. Um, took out K's high, game over, out, and watched the rest of the day. Had a really good day and a really good week. And on a day like today, I'm basically just looking for shorts unless something really, really visual, like I thought H period was providing uh, for me, um, did. So, as far as destinations, NES, the upside, all we have is today's high of 35.50 and then fill in the gap at 63.50. And then you should have everything from yesterday. For the downside, we have today's low of 60.25, which is a weekly low. Uh, 58, which I have as an afternoon pullback low from June 17th, and 36.39 monthly low from June of 2022. That's the one we didn't get. Inspy, upside, 370.62 today's high, filling the gap at 373.44, 282 cent gap. 375.37.12 wide from yesterday, and 377.66 daily high. For the downside, today's low, weekly low, 363.41. Monthly low, 362.17. And then December's low of 362.03 of 2020. So we have three lows which in with, within $2.38 of each other, a weekly and two monthlies. That, my friends, is a target at some point. <clears throat> now, let's get to the charts. All right, let's look at Russell. So Russell is still in a five-month balance, right? Just like we are. Russell's balance low is 162.78. They got to 165, so they got within $2 and change of it. Again, did they just get close to a balance? Again, we're not going to know. You have to understand, when we talk about balance rules, on each time frame, it's different. So this is a monthly balance. It's not a daily. It's not, so we're not sure yet. One day doesn't make a market. Yeah, we got close to it and we rebounded. You know, everybody's, you know, cheering. Wow, we held the balance low. No, we don't know that yet. We don't know that. What's going to give us an indication? Well, the other time frames will start giving us an indication. And I'll go to that in a second. But before I get to that, again, this October, uh, August of 18 all-time high of 173.39, which took two years to get back over, has now been breached. Four out of the last five months, and we're below it still. At some point, <laughs> at some point, we can't continue to go balance, bear, balance, bear, balance on the inside month, go up for one month, and then go back to balance. If we come out of this balance to the downside, boy, things get dicey again, right? We're looking at the 153 level at least. So the monthly is balanced. What will change that? Well, first thing to even think about, did we uh, just get close to a balanced low? We got to take out a weekly high. Well, right now we're $14 below this week's high. That's not going to be easy. The weekly came out of a three-week balance, outside week down. Remember we had the outside week up that was failed miserably for us last week? Well, the outside week down proved to be very successful this week in uh, Q's and ES. Now, weekly is down in IWM, and the daily is clearly down. Gap my main focus. So before we could even say, did we defend a balanced monthly low, we need to take out a daily high to get things going. Only then... Can we come into balance on the daily and then eventually try to get into balance on the weekly? So right now the monthly is balanced, weekly down, 
daily down in the IWM. Triple Qs. It's going to be the same thing with all of us. Their balance low is 269.28. What do we get down to today? 272. We got under $3 from it. Still balance. Weekly. Down. Right? Outside week down. Boom. Down. Okay? And then daily. Not only is it down, we have two gaps. They never filled their gap from the other day. They missed filling that gap by 39 cents. So they came out of a four-day balance with an outside day down with two gaps. You think this stuff is powerful? <clears throat> right? Now, granted, we had an outside week up. No, not in the uh, queues that week. But, you know, we did have an outside week up in SPY that was a miserable failure two weeks ago. Doesn't work all the time. But the outside week down certainly worked this week, and the outside day down that we all had th two days ago turned to be a charm. Down gaps are the focus. And now let's go to ES and SPY. SPY got pretty damn close to their balance low. 362.17, 363.29. Now we got closer in SPY because of the dividend. <clears throat> we never took it out, though. So we're balanced. But look, we've been talking about this. This is the COVID low. Finally got to it. Again, one day doesn't make a market. One month doesn't make a market because we're looking at a monthly chart. But for now, we're below that. <clears throat> I think these two lows, right? June's low and this low today are very important. If we don't start holding them, things could get very... I told you. I told the room, uh, and I might have said it in this morning's video. If we don't hold that level, we're going to see the 320s. You're going to see the round of 320 level, 320s in, in, uh, in 3200 in the S&P. So very big level to hold here. We'll see if we do. Balance. Weekly. Down. Since we got below the COVID weekly trend line... Three weeks attempted, and then this week, after the outside week down, forget about it. See ya. Down. And now the daily. Again, lower highs, lower lows. Right? One big gap. We filled ours from the other day. <clears throat> but the progression that happened all year until June, for two months they got away from it. So far, is back in line. <clears throat> Again, nothing changes. Nothing changes until we take out a daily high. Now, did we have a nice finish? Yeah, but does one day make a market? Of course not. Of course not. So, the progression of lower lows has stayed intact. What will be interesting, when we finally break the one-time framing down the daily, where our next lower high will be. We had a great, great week in the room. First and foremost, because we keep people out of trouble when the market's free fall. We're educating and informing them. Informing them. <clears throat> Second, when it does slow down, the, the, the talk about what the market's doing, not doing, looking forward, is just great discussions going on. And third, the type of traders and people we have in the room. I strongly urge you to come check out camelbacktrading.org. Again, it's $30 a month, okay? Why put $30 on an event contract when you, you can enrich your mind for $30 a month, for the whole month, uh, to f figure out what camelbacktrading.org is all about? Please continue to like. It takes two seconds to like my videos. So like them each time and subscribe to it and tell your family, friends, and coworkers. Enjoy your weekend, stay safe all, and we'll speak prior to the opening on Monday.